So as we present both his body and bread and his blood in the new in the new wine, as you might like to call it, which was first and fresh from the vine, uh, we do it unfermented, and we do it without leaven, and we do it without being puffed up. So 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. And 1 Peter 1, 18 tells us, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a land without blemish and without spot. And so Jesus, we see, being our paschal lamp, turn back with me now, Exodus chapter 12. We'll carry on in the foreshadow of Israel, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and God will show He is over everything. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, and this day shall ye be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations ye shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. So we see that this blood would protect all the people of God, just as Jesus' blood today makes us safe. And that it would save them from all the plagues that were to come upon the world. And that Israel was to remember it annually throughout all the generations. Forever until it's fulfilled. Pick up in uh, verse 21. In Moses called for them the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. So the lamb is called the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he has seen the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. So God would protect them. In a sense, he'd almost have protecting angel. You would see the blood on the doorpost, the lintel, and that destroying angel would not let death enter in. It reminds me of Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. Speaking of the new Jerusalem, when there's an angel guarding each gate, and no one, no wise, could enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever word of abominations or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the last book of life. And so we look for, looking forward to the blood of Christ making us right to enter into the gates of the New Jerusalem. Well, I can read a lot more about all these things that, that happen here in chapter 12. But I think I'm just going to zoom in on a couple of things. Rather than read the entire chapter to you, I'd like you to look at verse 43. The Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, 
This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Uh, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then he shall eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou that shall not carry forth out of the flesh or brought out of thy house, neither shall you break a bone thereof. So all the congregation of Israel, the people of God, shall keep it. And when a stranger stays with thee, sojourns with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. All right. What does that mean? Well, that meant for Israel to observe the Passover, uh, one of the uh, emblems Israel would keep is the circumcision of the males. So if a male was not circumcised, that would be uh, displeasing to God for them to try and keep the Passover. So what they would do is they would become circumcised and then keep it. I just want you to keep that in mind as we go further into this study here. Now, is the Passover still in effect today? Some might think yes. But let me give you some verses on it. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1, and it reads, For the law having the shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereon to perfect. So the Passover was remembered year after year with the sacrifice every year. Every year they would find an unblemished lamb and each household and remember the Lord's Passover and how God spared Israel coming out of Egypt. Verse 3 of Hebrews 10 says, But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sin. And then Hebrews 10 verse 9 reads, Then said he, Lo, this is Jesus speaking, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. So, how did Jesus take away the Passover? The way he took it away, well, first of all, verse 1 says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, the Passover was good. It was a foreshadow. But Jesus fulfilled the Passover. Because what the Passover did for all those years that Israel kept it year after year after year was point to Jesus, point to Jesus, point to Jesus. So when Jesus walked on the earth, John went, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the earth. The Paschal Lamb. And when Jesus went to the cross, He fulfilled the sacrificial law. He did not abolish the Ten Commandments. He did not do away with God's royal law, Thou shalt not kill. Give me a break. But what he did was he put away all the sacrifices because that was all fulfilled in him. Did he... Was there anything wrong with it? No. It just wasn't good enough. And it pointed to Jesus, so it was good enough to point to him. Now, in verse 20 it says, By a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. 